Welcome back aliens, my name is Levin Vidya and in this video we'll talk about Docker. Now Docker is basically an ecosystem where you can create containers, where you can run containers. But then why do we need it? See, we can talk about what is Docker in detail, but then the main question is why do we need Dockers? Now think about this, as a developer or as a tester or as a operation team, what we do is we work with softwares, right? The ultimate thing is to provide a software so that your user can use it. I'm talking about the web application now or web services. So what we do is we build an application. Normally development team, they build a software and then this software goes to, for the testing. So testing team will be doing the testing on it or, and then after that, if everything is going good, of course, if something goes wrong, it, it comes back to development team, but what if everything is perfect? Then it goes for the operation team so that they can deploy the application on prod server. Of course, depend upon company, this process might change, but then we have three steps, right? Develop the application, test the application and ship it to the production server so that we can run there. Now the thing is, when as a developer, when you build an application, you might be using some framework. So let's say if you're working on Java, you might be using Spring framework. Maybe you want to build a web application using, using Python, so you'll be using Django framework. So what we do is, when, when we want to build an application, we have a framework, and this framework will need certain libraries, some dependencies, or maybe some OS level features. So what we do is when you want to start with the application, you need before even before touching the application, you have to download dependencies. You have to download the libraries. Now, the thing is, after researching which library to use, after researching which dependency to use, you will download them and you, you, you will have those things on your machine. So you have your framework, you have your application, you have your dependencies, and maybe uh, some OS level features. Now, everything is done, right? Your product is ready with you. And of course, the next step would be testing. So you will ship this product to the ship, to the testing team. But the problem is the testing team, when they start using your application, they might face issues. So there's nothing wrong with the software. What went wrong is with the, with, with the dependencies because the dependency which you have used, of course, you have list them all the dependencies which are required. So they, will, they might be downloading those dependencies or maybe you're sending those dependencies in a jar file or in a, in a zip file. The problem is it's, it's not just the number of dependencies, it's also the versions, right? So maybe uh, you have used a version 4.2 and then they might be using 4.0. So there will be a clash. Your software will generate issues. The problem is with the dependencies and the libraries. And sometimes you know what happens when you are building an application, your application may need some extra dependencies which even you are not aware of. So what happens is maybe you have worked on some earlier projects and those projects needed some dependencies which you have in your machine. But the same thing is not there in the tester machine. The testing team will say, hey developer, something went wrong. Something went wrong because of you. And you'll be saying, hey, it was working on my machine. It's not working on your machine. So it's something wrong with your machine. We can have a blame game there. That's not how practically happens in the company. But then you can ima imagine the scenario, right? They might be thinking this in, in, their, in their head. So what if you can, when you, sh when you are shipping the application, the application which you have built, not just application, but you have to ship everything, the framework, dependencies, and libraries, everything. So you will take, take the entire stuff and give it to the testing team. But is it possible? Is it possible to give everything? The thing is, some dependencies and libraries are dependent on the OS. So you have to give the entire OS. And that's not practically possible, right? You can't copy your C drive and give it to someone else. And that's where we got a solution. And that solution is hypervisor. Okay, uh, if you don't know about hypervisors, think about virtual machines or VMware if you, that's very famous software, which you might have used uh, in your college days or in your company. So what we do using the virtual machine is, uh, so you have a hardware, so you have a physical hardware and on that hardware, you install an OS. Of course, every app, every machine has an OS, maybe Windows or uh, Linux based OS or Macintosh. Now uh, on that OS, you will be installing a hypervisor, a VMware basically. Now this VMware, can install another OS. Now the amazing thing is when you install the new OS, now this OS can be packed and you can ship it. So you can create an image of it. So the amazing thing is when you give this OS to someone else, they can load the same OS and this OS will have everything. So what I'm saying is a hardware OS, hypervisor and your OS, the custom OS or the, or the virtual OS, now on this virtual OS, you can, you can do anything you want. You can install softwares, you can install dependencies, you can, uh, you can build an application. Now, when you're giving the application to the testing team, don't just give the, uh, the software, give the entire image of your OS, the virtual image, which you say. And then once they get the image, they can create an instance of it. So basically you can imagine the concept of classes and objects in Java. 
when you give a class, they can create objects, they can create instances of it. Of course, you can't run image, but you can run instances. So with one image, you can have multiple instances running. So you can have 10 instances, you can have 100 instances. So that's amazing, right? So the testing team, will they will run the instance. Now, the amazing thing is they don't have to worry about dependencies because you have given them everything. The software which you have built, uh, libraries, dependencies, and maybe some OS level features. Now, they will be testing the application, not the dependencies, but they will test uh, your, your logic and everything is working or not. And then if everything goes well, even they don't have to uh, you know, think about the production server. They can simply create a virtual image, again, the new image making after making some changes, and give it to the production. Now, production will have the image. They will get the image. And the ops team, they will simply create an instance. Everything is running, right? So if, if this software works on your machine, it will also work on the server. That's great, right? That's the concept of hypervisors. But then something went wrong, right? Because the, the title of the video talks about Docker. In fact, in the start of the video, I've, I've said, hey, we will talk about Docker, and I'm talking about hypervisors. So the problem with hypervisor is it's a great concept, right? So if hypervisor was perfect, we don't even need Dockers. But the thing is, hypervisor is still great, OK? There are a lot of applications. There are a lot of companies that are still using hypervisors for various, for various reasons. But for one of the reasons uh, why hypervisor is not preferred is the the thing is, when you install an OS, when, then you install the hypervisors, and then you have to install another OS. Now, what if you have a server, and then you want to run multiple applications? So imagine every application will need its own OS. Now, that will be bulky, right? So you are basically running multiple operating system on the same hardware, the same physical hardware. So you're wasting resources. OK, when I say resource, you're wasting CPU, you're wasting RAM, you're wasting hard drive, you're wasting all the resources. This, the next issue is with the licenses. What if the OS which you're using is Windows OS? So of course, you have to buy those licenses. Or even if you are using a proprietary Linux-based OS, you have to buy license for, license for that. Uh, so we don't want to invest that, of, that much of money. So we got a concept of containers. Now, thanks to Linux containers, which is LXC, we, we can have a container systems. Now, what containers are is, think about containers as hypervisors. The only difference is, in containers, we don't install new OS. So all the containers will share the same they will share the same OS kernel. And that's beauty, right? So on the hardware, you'll be having an OS. On that OS, you'll be installing Docker, not hypervisor, Docker. And on this Docker, you can have multiple containers, and each container can run its own application, the full-fledged application, your application dependencies, everything. That, that's awesome, right? So that's the concept of containers. Now, this container can be created with the help of images. Now, go back to the example as a developer. You will be having a physical hardware. On that hardware, you will be installing an OS. On that OS, you will be installing Docker. And on Docker, you can create containers. Now, once you build the entire application, you just have to pack the application. You have to pack the container. Now, when you pack a container, it will create an image. Now, this image goes to the tester. They can create multiple containers. They can create multiple instances. And each instance, we can call it as containers. Again, the same concept. Imagine image as a, as a class, and you can have multiple containers as objects. And if you create two containers of the same image, they will behave in the same way, okay? Because they are, they are the containers, they are the instances of the same image. So now, when testing team has this, they can again they can do testing, and then when they ship when they ship this product to the production server, again they will again give the image, and on the production server you can run containers, and container will have everything. They just need a Docker system there, and it can run the application. Now, the beauty is you can create your own container. So let's say if I want to teach Spring Framework to someone, and then, uh, or maybe I want to demonstrate some tool. So of course, they don't have to install all the software. So what I can do is on my machine, I will install uh, Docker, and I can create a container with multiple uh, libraries and Spring Framework, and then I can give them the container, the image. Now, they can run the image on their machine, on their Docker. right? So we can also share the images. And that's why if you go to the public repository of Docker, they will have all the, they, will have, they have most of the repositories, they have most of the images. Uh, so you can use those images. Example, they have image for, for Redis, they have image for Node, so they have image for Ubuntu as well. So if you want to run those applications, just use Docker, pull the image, run it on your machine, and you can, you can get started. Right, that's the that's the beauty. Now, come back, coming back to Docker. Now, Docker is an ecosystem, as I mentioned. In Docker, we have so many things to talk about. We can talk about Docker hubs. So, the repositories which I was talk about talking about was a Docker hub. Uh, then we have a concept of Docker engine. So, you know, we have a client server architecture where we have a server. When we have a client, of course, we can talk talk about those things in detail. It's not a small topic we talk about, right? Uh, so, it has so many things involved inside 
Docker. So Docker is also a company. Now, when you say you work for Docker, so that's a company. They have Docker Inc. In fact, Docker also has an enterprise version. So they have a community version. They have an enterprise version. Uh, community version is open source, uh, and they have named it Mobi, and they have the enterprise version as well. The feature is almost same. It's just that for the enterprise version, they provide support. So that's the introduction of Docker. Uh, let me know if you if you want to know some more concepts about this. I can make a series on Docker. Anyway, we are going to use this concept in Hyperledger Fabric course. Uh, so yeah, that's a, that's about Docker. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for the videos. Bye. -bye.